tell you what it's time to do. Watch Robin Tooth build a 302. Hey, last episode I told you that we were not complete yet. Now I just did some video before you came over Steve and uh, ran the motor a little bit, revved it up. Sounds awesome in here but when you get out on the road it's a little sluggish. Uh -huh. Burping through the carburetor so it's you told me it's probably running lean. Right. So today um, we have gone through reading the owner's manual for the carburetor, watching the DVD for the carburetor, looking at complicated charts for the carburetor, and the bonus is the Googleization of the internet. So we, I searched what problem we were having, and this guy, Pace Fever 79 was having the exact same problem. So he explains it, kind of tells us where to start with this handy little calibration kit. There you go. With different jets, metering rods, and springs. So all that information combined with the professor, we're going to try something. But first, Steve gets to drive the car. I want him to drive the car so that he feels what I'm feeling. And uh, we'll take it from there. We're not going to hug, are we? No. Oh, okay, no. cool. No. No, you're just going to drive for a little bit. I don't know if it'll even burp through the carburetor, but it might. It may not. So we'll see how sluggish it feels. We'll come back and do a little clinic on carburation calibration. Steve, yeah, keep going straight. Professor Toothman is taking it for a ride. Cruising. And we're not getting any burpage through the carburetor, which is good, but do you feel that sluggishness? There's there's a little flat spot kind of off idle there, kind of right here. Really wants some fuel, doesn't it? It needs a little bit of gas. We should give her a dose and see how uh, how it responds. Okay, cool. So you know what it feels like. You want to keep going or you want to head back home? Yeah, let's head on back. Okay, awesome, you can man. turn left here. We don't take out this lady. Watch out for the bicyclist. So since, since uh, we were together last, I've gotten the alignment done. Feels good. Put the uh, the new springs in to give it a lower stance like we needed. Like you say, we can look over the hood now. Yeah. Down the hood. Feels good. But man, it seems to be running better than it has been. I mean, no burpage through the carburetor at all. Is that unusual? Yeah. I mean, before uh, it was burping pretty good, but maybe changing. Maybe changing the uh, vacuum line to that other port on the carburetor helped too, that timed port. Mm. But that really lags off the line, huh? Just a little. That, that isn't terrible. Okay, so after much um, additional research and looking at the owner's manual, we have decided to try the number 18 setting on this chart, which will do what? 
It's going to fatten it up in the cruise mode and fatten it up in the power mode. We're going to put some gas into this thing. More fuel equals power. I like it. Let's do it. So now we're going to take apart the uh, carburetor. And we cannot do what? We cannot drop any of these tiny little screws into any holes that go down into the engine. This would be bad. Yeah, so there is some risk taking that is going on this morning. Wish us luck. We still need your mojo. So, you got just a couple more screws to go, huh? Yeah, here we go. We have this up hard. This setup will fatten things up significantly. We'll see what we get. Carb tuning can be a uh, lengthy trial and error process. Sometimes it takes several weekends of fiddling and trying a little of this and a little of that as you sneak up on it. Well, all I know is it, it, it drives like it wants more food. That's a good sign, and we're going to give it. <laughs> Alright, Steve, so we've got the top of the carburetor off, and um, we're seeing the floats, right? Right. So float check. 7 sixteenths above the gasket. Looks like we're there. Right on. Look at the other side. Looks like we're there. Very cool. I would suspect that. Alright, well here's the carburetor with the top off it. So those floats fit down into here and over here so there's gas in there. And I'm wondering if I'm seeing dirt in there, Steve. Yep. We'll have to clean that shit out. Oh, it'll recollect. So, I, I like I said a second ago, I'm seeing, am I seeing dirt in there? Is that that dark stuff? Right down, collected, like right in there, is that dirt? Yes, it is. So, should we clean that out? Yeah, we'll clean it out. But I mentioned it's always amazing how much sediment seems to get past the filters and collect in the bottom of float bowls. Okay. Seems like every time I pop one off, there's that very fine little sediment in there. It happens. Gets passed through through the filter even. It does. Wow. But, uh, we'll clean that out and put in some nice fat jets and uh, make this thing scream for mama. Nice. All right, so we're going to take the jets and stuff out. So what we're doing is with the information that we saw in the book, these are the metering rods. And we're going to keep those that came in the carburetor. We're going to replace this little spring with these orange springs. And these are the jets we're going to replace. So we're just going to replace jets, springs, but keep the stock metering rods that came with the carburetor. Right. And that's going to give us more food. We'll go from there. So Steve, as you work on getting those jets in there, you noticed my new little my new little piece of bling. Nice touch. I'm impressed. That's just what this wagon me needs. The bling marries the uh merge of the decades of this engine from the fifties to the sixties. That that's why it's important that it be old school. Yep, that uh that little Ford shield was only used in the fifties. I got that at a uh, at like a gift shop in Virginia City last week. Okay, so we've replaced the jets, and we just put the top back on and reassemble and go for a ride. Yeehaw! Once we change the springs too. That comes next. Okay, so what do you got left there, Tooth Man? So in goes the main metering rod. We got the right spring in place, so it's just a matter of carefully fishing that through the holes. Here we go. Here goes the little cover. You know, the technology of this is amazing. I mean, there's so many little pieces just in a carburetor. And what's amazing about a old school carburetor, it's a purely mechanical. It has to provide different metering situations for a lot of different uh, uh, loads and such of the motor and it does so purely mechanically. That's amazing. The new modern day cars do it with a computer and sad to admit the computers do a better job. But the old school carburetor, purely mechanical, 
using nothing more than uh, hydraulics and uh, airflow can provide decent metering. Huh. I'll have to look up the history of carburetors. Was there a Mr. Carburetor? Gee, I don't know. They've been around since the internal combustion motor was developed. Is there a Mr. Carburetor? Ah, don't know. <laughs> question of the day. Question of the, of the day. First one to send in that the answer to that question may just win something. <laughs> All right. So, Steve, the other thing that's how do we these two front what are these called mixture screws? Idle mixture screws. Um, I have no idea where those are set right now. What do we want to do with those? We'll set them at about two turns just to get the thing going and then we'll, we'll uh, adjust it once we get it running. Cool. So we'll close them all the way? Yep. We'll close them down and reset their baseline to about a turn and a half to two turns. We'll work it from there. Cool. Okay. Let's get this okay. So the last assembly piece on this carburetor is that tiny little clip. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Do not drop. <laughs> Do not drop. There we go. Oh, I took a big risk by filming. That could have jinxed us heavily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the new setup is in the carburetor. Things are going to be different. Let's nice. hope in a very good way. Nice. Okay, so here's the mixture screws. You're One, you're closing them all the way, two, and you've opened it up two, up, two, up two turns, turns, both of them. That should suffice. All right. Now do we start it and just see how it idles and stuff, or what? Yep. We'll fire this up and adjust the idle a little bit. And then go for a ride. Go for a ride. Right on. Ready? Clear. cam that we put in there. <laughs> okay, I got the uh, air cleaner back on. Next door neighbor Joe has been supervising. And uh, Steve, are we ready to go for a ride? We're ready to go for a ride. All right, let's go. Okay, I'm I'm feeling that's a little better, huh? I'm barely tipping in. I could tell by the grin on your yeah, face that is better. just a little better, huh? That's better. I haven't even dabbled my toes in there yet. Nice. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> So that feels much better, huh? I think it is. I think we're on to something here. Alright, so we got the maiden uh, freeway cruise. First time on the freeway. Feels good. These cars out of 
out of way. <laughs> Rock's got a lead foot. Well, that feels great, Professor Toothman. Okay, while well, getting on the freeway, our memory card ran out of room on it, so we didn't get as much footage on the freeway as we wanted to. Um, but we, how much did we actually put into the carburetor? All right, our change increased the cruising uh, fuel mixture by 12% and the power mixture by 5%. Pretty big change in the cruise mode. Now you know the only mixture we could really add to it, don't you? Secondaries. The secondaries, but there's <laughs> one other. We ended up the ep last episode with some wild turkey. Oh, indeed. Do you think she'd want a little taste? I think that's only right. We should share. So, maybe next episode, we give her a little dropper full and see what happens, because that stuff should burn pretty good, don't you think? It ought to clear out anything that's ailing the uh, system here. So 101 octane? Bingo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with us. We had fun on a Saturday. See you next time. Dig it. All oh, the boys will be back. Now you're part of the crew. See you next time on Project 302.